you're a food girl. Why have you never made like a Ukrainian cuisine like cookbook or something? You know, I grew up with like my my mom would make a lot of Ukrainian food, but then she also wanted to adapt the American culture. Ah. So, you know, being that we we've pretty much been here for a very long time now yeah. uh, that she started kind of doing more American recipes. And then it was kind of a mishmash. You know, now I I make some Ukrainian influenced dishes and I even have a couple on my blog, like Ukrainian cucumber, tomato, onion salad. That's like a very Ukrainian staple salad. But for the most part, I think that when I was growing up, like to be honest, I wasn't a big fan of the Ukrainian food. There's some things I absolutely love and I like shuba, which is, it's called a herring in a fur coat. And it's really crazy to people that don't know what it is, but it's pretty much like herring, which is a fish. And then like it's layered, a layer of potatoes, a layer of carrots, um, a layer and then like it's topped with like mayo and beets and it's mixed together and it's like it's like a layered salad and it's like my favorite and so I make those things sometimes but it's really not the and again you know like I follow more of like a low carb diet and so a lot of those foods aren't very like they don't work well with the low carb diets but for me you know maybe someday I would like to do more like my twist on that where it's kind of mixed but I honestly, it's not that I don't like the food. I do enjoy it. I just didn't grow up eating a lot, a lot of the Ukrainian foods. It was always like a mix, unless I went to Ukrainian wedding, because obviously like all of a Ukrainian weddings are crazy. If you ever go to an authentic Ukrainian wedding, like it's, you will have like three tables of food. That's like, ev like everybody makes food and it's like a buffet and it's like, the most food you've ever seen in your life. I'm not even going to start with a dessert. And it's like, in, like at my wedding, I had a dessert table that was Ukrainian food and pretty much all my aunts and my mom and like her friends and their friends all made a dessert. It was crazy, Jimmy. I, I had to like say, okay, we cannot open the dessert table until like after the meal is over. Cause what happens is as soon as the dessert table is open, you'll just see a herd of people there and they're trying to get all the best stuff. And I was like, we need to hide this table. But when, when it was like revealed all the Americans in my wedding, cause we had like a Ukrainian American wedding, we're like, Oh my God, I've never seen so much dessert in my life. I'm like, yeah, that's how we roll. We love our desserts. Um, so yeah, I just, maybe someday I will write something that's like intertwined. Can you hear me still? Yes. Okay, because somebody just tried to call me and usually uh, kills it. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but somebody tried to call and usually people can't hear me when, when somebody calls. So yeah. I'm glad, Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know, I try to kind of intertwine some Ukrainian things into my recipes that I have on my blog, EP Food Explore, as as much as I can. But again, because I mainly follow like the keto low carbish way of eating, paleo, it, it's kind of hard to do too much of it because it's very carb heavy and carb focused food. Yeah, and look, that's cool. I, I was thinking when you were talking about fusing the American food that your mom was with like some Ukrainian. I was thinking, I was imagining like McDonald's French fries with sauerkraut on top or something. <laughs> no, we definitely never really had McDonald's, and that was like the other thing. My Ukrainians are very much of like you eat food at home and you make food at home, and yes. like they don't really like to like go out to eat. Like my parents probably, I can count on like my two hands the amount of times my parents went out to eat it's very yeah. much like you make food at home we make it from scratch it's kind of their love language i would say yeah. that food is like my mom's and, and a lot of ukrainian women's love language it's how they show love it's how they serve it, it's like how they you know it's it's how they feel that they're contributing and it's a big deal for them to host and it and it's like it, it's really everything to them and it's almost offensive and side note, if you ever go to somebody's house that's Ukrainian or Ukrainian offers you food, it's actually pretty offensive to say no. So even if you're not hungry, just take a few bites because they do take that seriously because that is such part, a big part of the culture and the love language aspects that it's almost like offensive to them if you say no to their food. So.
Yeah, and that's a, I mean, I've seen that in a lot of places around the world. America's the only one where we're like, yeah, give me all the fast food as quickly as possible. And, uh, and we don't really make it a communal experience, which is why family is probably so uh, precious because there's talking and during the communalness of eating and sharing a meal. Um, and yeah, just culturally, that that totally makes sense. How about obesity and chronic disease? Is it rampant? It wouldn't sound like it would be. It sounds like if they're eating at home, trying to focus on, I mean, obviously carby foods, but maybe mm -hmm. from a genetic standpoint over generations, they've adapted to be able to eat those carbs and not be harmful within that context or has westernized food infiltrated. Do you know? So I think it's kind of a mix. I think in Ukraine itself, I don't think the obesity and diabetes are as prevalent as the Ukrainians that migrated to an America to an American culture. And part of that I also think is just like the amount that they like like move over there and walk over there. And you know, not that it's like all about calorie balance as we know, but there's just the work that they do, the physical work and, and the walking places versus just sitting at a desk job for eight hours a day and stuff. I do see unfortunately that a lot of the Ukrainian community has you know there are issues that are coming up with diabetes um, in Cleveland and, in Cleveland yeah well I live so right now I live in Columbus I okay. moved out here um when oh, I got Ohio. Married. Ohio. yeah Ohio. when when my husband um he just you know was like okay I'll come to Columbus but in general, I do see it like the older that they get, there are a lot of Ukrainians that are struggling now with obesity and um, diabetes, but like specifically, even some of my family members, which is very devastating and heartbreaking. But that's again, because they're just very traditional and, and they're very stuck in their ways. Like, well, this is what I grew up eating. I grew up eating potatoes, you know, fish and potatoes and the and the pierogies and the pelemeni and the you know vareniki and all of these things that are like pretty much like carb based and that's if that makes a, a majority of their diet and the vegetables that they do eat a lot of it's like corn or sauerkraut and so it's like it, it's hard because there's some that adapted to like more of healthier ways of eating and the you know low carb or even just like focusing on quality protein and vegetables and good fats but there's some that are just they're they don't want to change and they're set in their ways and it's unfortunate i even know friends that talk about their family members that you know they're on the verge of of getting their like legs amputated because of their diabetes and the severity and they just refuse to change their lifestyle and that's again also another piece of ukrainians is like we as a culture are very stubborn. I am very stubborn and I will admit that. And I think that's a very cultural thing where we, we just like, we're stubborn we just don't want to change. And it's hard for us to, to adapt to things. And it's just like a mindset and a culture thing. So unfortunately, you know, there, there is a price to pay when it comes to that, when you're not going to be changing your lifestyle. And, and that's just unfortunate. And the only thing we can do is like educate and, 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 and kind of change the generations, right, um, from, from going forward. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the socioeconomic uh, aspect of the Ukrainian kind of culture. Uh, is it a low-class kind of culture, kind of a middle-class dominant like we are here in America? Are there great divides when it comes to income? Want to talk about I would that? say it would probably be, like, more low to middle. Okay. Again, I... Um, I, I mean, I, I grew up here and I'm like very like, I would call myself an American, even though I was born there and I'm like Ukrainian. Um, but I would say for the most part, it's, it's more on the poor end and middle class. Like Ukrainians are very frugal. So they're all about savings yes. <laughs> and it gets a little, a, a little extreme at times. Like, oh no, that's too much, or we can't afford this, or how can we save money? They're very like bargain hunters, very, very big in the culture. So I think that's just like from growing up and not having a lot of money. So, I mean, I'm sure there's pockets of Ukraine, Ukraine that's more wealthier, but I would say in the area that I grew up, it was more of a low to, to middle class. Now, you know, my dad had a great job. He, he went to college. He was actually a watchman, 
watch repairman, which was actually considered a, a very prestigious job yeah. in Ukraine. And so, you know, we were, we were, it was fine. I mean, he grew up really poor, but we were making do, but he just knew that he wouldn't be able to get the opportunities that he could in this country because of that, just like income levels and, and the amount of money to make, get to make and all that stuff. But I would say in general, it's, the culture where I'm from, it's more focused in like just that there's like always a shortage of things. And it's like, you have to save your money. And what are you saving it for? I don't know. And that was kind of a hard thing for me to get past when I, yeah. when I started my own business, because my mindset was very programmed with my upbringing that there's never enough. And there's, you know, if somebody has, if I take a piece of pie, then nobody has the piece of the pie type of thing mindset. And so it's like, you know, you have to save and you have to, you can't spend money on this. And how dear, oh my gosh, you paid this for what? Like what? I could have gotten a million of these little trinkets for that and just things like that. And I feel like that's a mindset thing that I had to get over, but it was just based on my upgrowing. It's like, no, we can't afford that. That's too much. And we need to save and clip coupons. And I just think it was because of that being raised in that way. Yeah, I can tell you here in the South, there's a lot of coupon clippers and always searching for bargains. And sales, so yeah, getting everything. Oh, that will go on sale. Let's just wait. Or, yeah. you know, the, like almost expired meats and groceries and all of that. And it, you know, to each their own. Um, that is like a mindset that I had to get over with starting my business because I was like, I will not be successful in business if I have that lack you know, um, that lack mentality. It's good for survival though. So it's good that that's yeah. the mentality. Of course. That you can last if you have that mentality. Whereas if you're less frugal and everything's gone, then you might be hungry and not be able to eat. Yeah. And again, and that carries on. So that's, again, that's, that was great. And it worked at that time. And that's why Ukrainians like very stubborn and very set in their ways and the way that things have always been done. And this is just the way it is where it's like, well, now you're in America. This is the land of opportunity and there's abundance and there's, you know, infinite possibilities, but it's very hard for them to like grasp that. And they're still living in this very, which I mean, I am not like judging or anything. If it works for you, it works for you. But I feel like as a culture in general, it, it's very like, it's like, it, there is that scarcity and like, there's not enough when we need to save. And because of that, just like growing up and how it was back in the day where they didn't have much. Did you go keto and thought you had to give up wine? Well, let me introduce you to Dry Farm Wines. It is the world's first sugar-free alcohol that is lower than your typical wines. Organic made it local farms that do it the right way. Most of the wines that you buy are from three really big companies loaded with additives and preservatives, so many dozens of those kinds of things. You don't want all that junk in your wine. So go to dryfarmwines.com slash Jimmy and they will ship you these wines. And just because you listen to this podcast, Dry Farm Wines is going to give you a bottle in your first order for just one cent. Go to dryfarmwines.com slash Jimmy and uh, you will get your bottle of wine for just one singular penny. Go check them out. Dry Farm Wines, you guys. It's wine o'clock somewhere. Let's go get some wine. About the time you left the Ukraine, the country was a little bit in turmoil at that time uh, with all that was happening there. Um, and so they probably built that mindset generationally of, hey, we don't know when all of this turmoil might hit us again. So let's save for that rainy day. I mm -hmm. mean, it, I can see why that mentality is there. That's wonderful. So I want to get into what you're doing to help your uh, fellow Ukrainian people. And again, you wrote a wonderful post. Again, guys, go to Eat, Be Fit, Explore over on Instagram. She's got a wonderful uh, picture of herself when she was immigrating here. But tell us a little bit about what you are doing to try to raise money to help your fellow countrymen. Yeah, so, you know, I was thinking about it and it was just, I got to the point where I was like, okay, you know, I'm praying every day and sure I can do that, but I'm like, there has to be more that I can do. And I just kind of felt a little guilty because I was like, you know, that could have been me. 
like if my parents didn't migrate us over here, I would have, I would have still been there. Like yeah. God knows if I would have been alive right now, I would have still been there in, in the midst of all this chaos. So I just feel like so blessed and grateful to be living in this country, to have, you know, opportunity to go to college and start my own business and just everything in my life. And I just like, I, I need to give back. I need to do more. So what I decided to do and like prayer is great. And if 